Hello, I'm Jackie. And I'm Camille. Welcome, Welcome to, to Two Studios, Studios Art, Art Channel. Channel. Hit like and subscribe to get our free demos and tutorials right to your inbox. Happy painting! Hello friends, I'm Camille from Two Studios Art. Thank you for joining me today. We are going to be painting spring flowers in watercolor. I am using these beautiful Yarka watercolor paints here that we bought at Opus Art Supplies. They are a Russian paint and they're very good value. They are uh, highly pigmented and uh, are not super expensive. So I really love using these. I'm going to be using three brushes. These are the three brushes, uh, all of them round. Now only one of these is actually a watercolor brush, this one here. These ones, they're a um, multi-purpose brush. You don't need to be using watercolor brushes when you're painting with watercolor. Just use what you have. All right, I'm gonna get my pencil here. When I'm doing a bouquet of flowers, I sometimes like to just do a little bit of a outline to imagine how I'm going to frame frame this composition. So I'm just going to imagine a little bit of a, a shape kind of like this. I'm going to be erasing this line later on, but it just helps me to get a sense of maybe a little lower down. Like I said, I'm going to erase this later, but it gives me a sense of how to ground the painting and what shape it should take so that it looks nice on the page. It's pretty much centered. So it is winter and I'm looking forward to spring. I'm sure you are too. But I saw the other day some snowdrops. So I'm using my phone and I'm looking for some flowers for inspiration. And I really like some of these crocuses that we saw. So I think I'm gonna start with crocuses. For that, I'm gonna use my watercolor brush, a little bit of a bigger one. Now, when I paint with paint flowers, usually I just start with a kind of a blob. Now my first crocus is going to be a purple color. So I'm going to get some of this purple and test it here. It's quite pretty. I might add a little bit of this, this color into it. Oh, that's really nice. Watercolor is a little bit different from acrylic in that you start with the lighter colors and you work your way darker. So to paint my crocuses, I'm gonna, just gonna start with doing like three little peaks, kind of like that. There's gonna be some other petals that will appear in here, but they'll come later. When I was looking at my crocus pictures, I realized that the purple or whatever color that flower is, whether it's purple or yellow or white, it actually comes down the stem a little bit. So I'm just going to put these in and draw the stem color, like draw this purple into the stem color. They're going to look a little bit flat at first, but that's okay. We, we bring the depth out as we go along. It's going to make some more. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, I like that. Maybe we have another one here. Now things usually look good for some reason, or I really likes to see things in groups of three or five. For some reason, when we look at something and there's only two of them, we feel that there's another one we just didn't see. So I'm gonna put that in there. I'm gonna bring the stems in a minute, but when I was looking at these crocus pictures, I also noticed that the buds are very close to the ground. So here's, there's gonna be a bud here. Oh, it's so pretty. Just make a little bit more bluey color. And I'll put a little bud there. So now there's five of them. Okay, so I'm gonna go for a slightly smaller brush and I'm gonna mix in some stem colors. Now we have two greens here in this palette. One is a bit of a bluey green. And this one here is a little bit more yellow in it. 
And we can, of course, adjust our green by adding maybe some ochre in. Now remember, you can, you can always start lighter and then go darker. And I'm going to imagine that the bottom of where my bouquet is is going to be somewhere down here. So that gives me a little bit of a gauge. Now crocuses do not have very long stems. They're such cute little flowers. They're so cheerful. So I'm just going to draw some stems and draw it right up into that wet purple. And don't worry about it at all if it looks like it's bleeding through. It doesn't matter. That's what makes it beautiful. And don't want to forget my little, little buds. Hi. You're so cute. Now let's add, let's add some little leaves because crocuses have a lot of little leaves. It's very interesting to notice that the spring flowers, the bulbs, all have a somewhat similar shape. They have spear-like leaves, little thin stems, now this is pretty light colored, but it'll darken up. And uh, they usually have a, at the bottom of the petals, they've got this little, often a little round ball here. Crocus is slightly less so, but definitely daffodils, tulips have that, snowdrops, bluebells, those kind of things, they all have that same kind of shape. And all of them have these little spear-like leaves. So I don't know if that's trying to break through cold ground or what that's all about, but it's interesting that they're all sort of like that. Makes it a bit easier when you're drawing or painting them because you have a template to go off of. You know, oh, it's gonna have, gonna have little leaves like that. It doesn't even really matter which flower you're painting. Okay. Now I'm unsure right now whether or not to paint the other petals or to just start with a different flower. Maybe we'll just start with a different flower. I am going to start with some pretty yellow daffodils. Now, I don't know if anyone can tell me what the difference between a daffodil and a narcissus is beside the size. I really have no idea, but I'd love to learn. Now, they're a little bit taller and they have six beautiful yellow petals, and then that center trumpet shape. Now there's five, one, two, three, four, five. We need one more. Now this is looking very light in color, but we can always darken it. And it will show up a bit more as we, as we paint. And do that. I'm going to have one paint pointing this way. Now this round brush with this pointy end is perfect for making petals. Oh, they're so pretty. Look at that. You're so cute. Hmm. Right. They have the, the buds are just a little thing kind of like this. They have a long green stem, except for these ones. They're not too tall. Maybe these are narcissus. So we have three flowers there. Now this might be a really good time to go back in to our crocuses. It's a good idea to let the paint dry a little bit, unless you're really going for that wet on wet look, which can be very, very beautiful. Look what's happened right here in this little bud. You see the stem color has just bled into and created a beautiful little dark outline into the, the bud part. You, it's very hard to even plan that, but it's so pretty. You don't even really need to. You just, just enjoy the way the paint does its own magical kind of thing. Now I am going to put in a couple more petals here. should join this one up. I'm pretty sure a crocus has five, five petals. So if we put in the wrong number of petals, it automatically, you're not quite sure what it is, but it's all right. Now 
And I'm just kind of doing almost like a little heart shape but with pointy tops. That's how this is getting its look. Yeah, we'll see where you go with that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, hmm, let's add some stems to our daffodils. And I always go lighter and then you can add more color later on. So this guy is gonna be looking basically right at us. So we're not gonna see the back of this flower. We're just gonna see the stem. Oh, I can't really see much paint there, but too late. I'm not worried if it blends in a little bit with my crocus. Now my daffodil's a bit green too. That's okay, some of them are. Okay, now this one here is going to have this little ball thing. I'm going to lighten this up because this is a bit intense, this color, for now. Bring that back there. And this guy here, not sure how wet it is. Oh, it looks like it's dried up a little bit, so let's see if we can get a little bit of this kind of going. This one hasn't come out yet. Daffodils have lovely long leaves. My son planted one in his class in a paper cup and gave it to me and it's been sitting on the windowsill getting longer and longer. And when I pick it up and water it, I can see the little bud inside, but it hasn't come out yet. but it feels good to have a little bit of spring coming on my windowsill. So here are these like spear-like flower um, leaves, but they're just longer because it's a daffodil. Now you see some of my color is spreading from my crocus into my leaves, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay. Now the next flower I'm gonna add is gonna be some snowdrops. Snowdrops are white, and there's always a little bit of an issue with painting a white flower on white paper. So there's kind of two ways that you can make it look like a white flower. You can either paint it a very light color of a different color, and often blue is a very common choice, a very, very pale blue. And then you can darken the background behind it. So by contrast, it looks lighter. So I'm gonna start with this light blue here. And I am just gonna paint some snowdrops in and not worry about it. These are gonna be light blue looking. If you feel that your blue is too intense, it will fade a bit as it dries. It's okay. I'm just gonna paint these petals and I'm leaving a little bit of unpainted surface area so it'll look like a little bit of a highlight. Oh, I love snowdrops. They're so encouraging. Okay. That one's gotten a bit blobby, but again, oh, drop something. We won't worry about it. I'm going to do, just for symmetry purposes, a few more on this side. It doesn't have to be exactly symmetrical. In fact, it's probably better if it's not, but this one's not gonna be blooming yet. So there's five snowdrops. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're gonna do some of those snowdrop stems. Snowdrops hang kind of upside down. They have a little ball at the base of the base of the flower and then the stem goes up and down here I put a little ball at the base of this one and the stem goes up and down oops I just added purple okie dokie 
it's a bit dark. This one here, my brush has a bit, lot of water on it. Might have been too much. And they also have these sweet little leaves. Just adding some extra leaves in there. Okay, over on this side, I'm gonna do a little ball there and then up and down. And this side, this up and down. All right, now I still need to come back to our daffodils and I think add a few more crocuses in. And I'd love to get some forsythia in there, but I'm gonna just give it a couple of minutes and let it just dry a little bit before going back in. But look how pretty this is. See how we were, I was a little worried at first about whether or not that pink should go into the leaf like that. And now I just think that I'm so glad it did. It's so pretty. All right, I'll just be back in just a couple minutes. Hello friends, we have let our paint dry out a little bit, so we're going to come on back and we are going to add in some more of these details. Now I'm going to go right into my, into my daffodils here. Get some nice, nice sunny orange. And I'm going to put that right in here. nice it's a beautiful color and here too now you can still see some of that green but we're not going to worry about that it's going to come out looking a little bit like a shadow and just add a bit more color into the into the petals as well I love daffodils. They're so cheerful. Add a bit more yellow down here as well. And we're going to also come in here and add a bit more yellow too. This one I can see has just five petals and we talked about how daffodils have six petals so I think I need to go in and add another petal in here. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to add a little bit of orange into the center of our crocuses. So when I was looking at pictures of crocuses on the internet, didn't matter what the color of the crocus was, they had these really cute little orange centers. So white crocuses, purple crocuses, yellow crocuses, they all had this lovely little orange center in it. So pretty. Okay. Now, I had wanted to put in some forsythia as well, so I'm going to put in a nice dark brown branch. And I wonder what we should do with the, maybe put a little bit of ochre into that brown there. Now, where should we put it? Why don't, just for fun, we'll start down here. And we're going to just go right over top. And I'm going to do some on the other side too. And on this side, I'm going to add a little purple to that brown. Not really sure what's making me want to do that, but we're going to do it. Just darken it up a little bit. That's a bit, that's quite dark. Okay. 
gonna add a little bit more dark onto this side to kind of balance that out. They do have very dark branches. This looks okay. Dab off my brush here. And while that branch is drying, I am going to go back into my crocuses and I'm going to add some the detail into these petals a little bit. Bring some of that color down. Also just deepen the deepen the color in general. It makes for a bit more of a, a 3D kind of a feel. Now this one here had a bit of a different color of purple, so I'm gonna just change that a little bit here. And add a bit more color to the top of the back ones. pretty. Okay, I am going to, I was about to choose this little brush, but I think I'm going to choose this medium sized one instead. And I'm going to add a little bit of a yellow color into the top of my snowdrops, just to give them a little bit of depth. They're still supposed to look white. But sometimes just changing the color temperature of something gives it a little bit of depth, almost as if you had made it darker. You're just changing the temperature of it. So that's why I'm putting a little bit of yellow into my... Oh, that one's a bit muddy. Let's rinse that brush off there. Yeah, it's a bit too much yellow on the brush. There you go. Let's just try this. And now this one here, which is now hiding behind hiding behind this branch, you can see the green bled right into there. So I'm just going to make a little suggestion right here. There we go. And I'm going to add a bit more green. A bit more green to my stems. Just darken these up a little bit. Okay, so now I am going to put in some forsythia flowers. Now forsythia is one of my favorite spring flowers. It grows kind of on a shrub tree sort of thing. They're just so beautiful. And they are bright yellow and they have four petals on them and they tend to bunch together. Often you can't tell one flower from the next because there's so many. So I'm just going to draw these petals here, like this. They're little, little flowers. Oh, they're so cute. And they're bright yellow too, so I'm using lots of paint on my brush to really get that deep yellow feeling. It's a beautiful forsythia and it says hello it's spring we can all be happy now I mean not I mean every season has its special pleasures that make you feel good but there's nothing quite like spring flowers lets you know the world is waking up from winter so we're just gonna put a whole pile of these beautiful long petals these little yellow flowers in this forsythia. You can see the branch underneath it. That's okay. In some places there will just be one little flower sticking out. 
In other places, there will be tons of them. And here I'm just kind of imagining that they're back there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow. Not all your flowers need to be attached to something. Sometimes you can just give the suggestion of where they are. And I'm going to go on to the other side now. And on this side. Oh, look, here's a nice effect. I see that the branch on this side is still a little bit wet. And if I just draw my brush through it, I can actually pick up some of this brown paint and for a little bit of depth into these flowers here. Sometimes you think you don't like it when the paint bleeds into your other colors and other, and other times you just think, oh, I'm so glad it did. Didn't know it was going to look like that. Add a bit more water onto this brush, it's starting to get a bit scratchy. Maybe I'll bring some of that brown over here. Just give it a little bit more depth. After all, each one of these flowers is attached with a little stem of its own. Add a bit more yellow. Oh, made that a little bit muddy. Let's really wash this brush off. I have a piece of um, paper towel here that I use to dab off the excess water. It also lets me tell what color the water is on my brush. If it's gotten dirty, I can tell when I dab it off like that. Here I'm adding forsythia flowers in. They're not attached to anything. We might have to attach them to something in a minute. Now, I was going to add some yellow crocuses in, but now I don't think I have to. I think that we're getting just the right amount of yellow in with this forsythia. Maybe I'll just put some here. Now, I know from studying the flowers that they have four petals but kind of just giving the suggestion of them here rather than drawing each petal in specifically. Now I'm going to take my brown and I'm going to add a little bit of green to this brown because I feel like it. Oops, that's a bit of a drop there. A bit more brown. And add it in. For Scythia, when it blooms, often has little teeny tiny green leaves on them. So I'm going to put a little bit of these green leaves in. And the leaves, there's not that many. They look just like the flowers. They're the same number of petals. They kind of look like a green flower. I'm going to add in, make this a bit more of a yellowy green because they're pretty yellowy green. Now I think we're just about ready to finish this up here. Add a few more little green leaves to these forsythia plants, give it some depth. And 
you can just see the snowdrops in there. Um, on another time, I might have made more of a decision to darken the background, but I like the way this painting feels light and fresh. I'm just going to just define the tops of them a little bit. Just to too much but we can just take that down a little bit there we go and here's our spring bouquet of flowers in watercolor I'm noticing it's a little bit close to the top of the page but I'm okay with that I like it in fact this would be a really nice kind of a painting to maybe write a beautiful beautiful saying or something underneath it. There's just enough space to say spring or or something, some little inspirational quote that makes you get the feeling of spring. Well, thank you so much and thank you for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy painting!